In this video, I want to talk about the carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer system as it applies to the human body. Okay, now if you recall back to general chemistry, a buffer is something that resists changes in pH. So, pH is a measure of hydrogen ion concentration, so protons really. So, um, for instance, bicarbonate can act as a buffer in that if there's too much H plus around, it can pick some up and become the protonated version of it, which is this carbonic acid. Or, if there's too little H plus around, um, and the pH or the H plus concentration needs to increase, then uh, bicarbonate could donate its proton to the environment. Um, in any case, I don't want to talk too much about that. That's G chem stuff. But in biochemistry, what I talk, want to talk about um, specifically is how this applies to human biochemistry, right? So we, as humans, right, we breathe in oxygen and we undergo cellular respiration and we convert glucoses um, to carbon dioxide. Now, for a moment in our metabolizing tissues, uh, well that when we end up exhaling that um, that carbon dioxide, but before we exhale it, that carbon dioxide exists in our blood. So what happens there? This is what's going to go on there. So carbon dioxide, right, is a gas, and it'll dissolve in water, right, in our blood. <coughs> Excuse me. And when they come together, it'll form carbonic acid, right? This is, this reaction doesn't just happen. It's enzyme catalyzed, and the enzyme that does this, that catalyzes this reaction, is called carbonic anhydrase. And um, we haven't talked yet about enzymes in these videos just yet, but uh, we're going to talk about them much, much more later. But for now... Um, you guys are probably already familiar with the idea that an enzyme um, speeds up a particular chemical reaction and allows a chemical reaction uh, to happen. So we take carbon dioxide and water form this carbonic acid. Now this carbonic acid, right, is an acid, so it is a proton donor. So it will donate a proton to the environment and it will be left as bicarbonate. Okay. Now what's going on here so when we consider this whole reaction scheme we definitely want to uh, think about back to general chemistry the idea Le Chatelier's principle so I'll just write that here Le Chatelier's principle if you recall back to um, to general chemistry, Le Chatelier's principle was the whole idea behind equilibrium, is that if a particular reaction is at equilibrium and it is disturbed somehow, it will account for that difference so as to reestablish equilibrium. So what I want to get at is how carbon dioxide is related to H plus concentration and therefore pH. Okay, so what happens, or what happens if we if we increase if the carbon dioxide concentration increases right if we have a bunch of carbon dioxide what happens so if this reaction is at equilibrium and we increase the amount of carbon dioxide we're disturbing the equilibrium now when that happens if there's a bunch of this right that's going to shift the reaction to the right right now if that happens we're going to take this and shift to the right we're going to create more of this acid, and eventually we're going to have to shift it more to the right, so this is going to cause an increase in the proton concentration, right? So an increase in the carbon dioxide, um, const or pressure of carbon dioxide, or if there's just more carbon dioxide around, that's going to cause a shift to the right in the equilibrium, causing the an increase in H plus concentration, proton concentration. Now, what does that translate into in terms of pH, right? An increase in H plus concentration means more acidic, right? More acidic is a lower pH, okay? So now, 
um, on the flip side, right, if, if, actually before I even mention that, this, right, this is very, very acidic, right, These, this, this case here, so let me actually highlight that, right, this is acidic, right, this here, acidic, right, a low pH or a high H plus concentration describes an acidic environment, right, so an increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the blood, right, it's all happening in the blood, I should probably note that here, That's going to make the environment acidic. Now, um, that is termed, this whole idea here is termed acidosis, if you've heard that medical term before. Okay. That's when the pH of the blood becomes too low or too acidic. Okay. Now, on the, on the flip side, right, if we have uh, a decrease, a decrease in carbon dioxide, right, the pressure of carbon dioxide, then what's going to happen? If, well, if we decrease the amount of this, then the reaction has to, in order to reestablish equilibrium, has to shift to the left. So if it's going to shift to the left, we're going to use up H pluses and they're going to go this way, right, to the, to the left. Now, if that's going to happen, then we're going to decrease H plus concentration, and that will mean an increase in pH. Right, so that's going to describe a basic environment, right? So if it's a basic environment, what we have, what we call that, we don't call it basic osis. <laughs> what we call it is alkalosis. Okay, so why am I even mentioning this, right? Who cares? Well, the reason why is because these things you might might already figure are the idea is that these things are not good, right? Our body needs to maintain, or at least our blood, different areas of our body need to maintain optimal pHs. And any a small change in pH can be very, very damaging. Um, and the reason why, we'll talk about later, is because proteins uh, function at particular pHs. And a change in pH can change the structure of a protein or proteins and therefore change their function. If their function is, is compromised, that could be a really, really bad thing, right? That could result in death. So, um, the reason why, I, why I'm even mentioning this, right, I want to write this down really quickly, is because even small changes in pH can be very bad or very damaging potentially life-threatening right I think the optimal blood pH is um, approximately um, 7.4 so a change uh, a change from this from this pH could be very, very bad for the, our blood proteins, including particularly uh, hemoglobin, um, which carries um, carries oxygen uh, in, our, in the blood, which of course we'll talk about later. Now, what I want to mention further is uh, the ideas of hyperventilation and hypoventilation. Now, so first I want to describe, I want to define ventilation. I like the color orange. <laughs> um, so ventilation, you may have all heard that word. You may have even heard hyperventilation or hypoventilation. It may not be totally clear on what those things are. Now, when you think about ventilation, right, um, you might have heard the term like if, you know, if you're, down in the dumps and you want to talk to your friend, you're going to vent to them. So what that sort of implies is that you're going to let it all out to them, you're going to tell them everything, you know? So you're letting everything out. When it applies to breathing, right, ventilation, we're talking about breathing out, okay? So if we're breathing out, what do we breathe out? We breathe out, humans breathe out uh, carbon dioxide. Okay, so 
you, knowing this, right, knowing that ventilation, right, if, we're, if we just consider it as being, you know, breathing out CO2, then what is hyperventilation? Well, hyperventilation would be breathing out too much, right? Hyper usually implies much or a lot of, a lot of ventilation. So we're breathing out, in this case, too much CO2. Okay? Breathing out too much CO2. So what does that mean? Well, if we're breathing out too much CO2, what does that mean for our CO2? concentrations or our, our, the pressure of CO2 in our blood. So if we're breathing out too much, that means we have a little bit left, right? We have too low an amount of CO2 in our blood, right? If we're breathing out all of it or a lot of it, then we have a very small amount of CO2 um, in our blood. So we have a decreased amount of CO2. So if we have a decreased amount of CO2, how does that change its equilibrium? Well, if we decrease this, right, we want to make more. How do we make more? Shift this reaction to the left. So when that happens, we're going to take these H plus constant H pluses and this bicarbonate and, and just shift the entire reaction to the left to create more CO2. So what does that cause? That causes a decrease in H plus concentration. So a decrease in H plus concentration means what for our pH? Well, that's an increase in pH. Right? So um so that that is what is that that is alkalosis right so this is a problem right if you're hyperventilating your your blood is going to be at a high pH which is not good obviously okay so on the flip side we have hypoventilation okay this would mean that you're breathing out too little right you're venting less right hypo means less so breathing out too little oops too little co2 right so if you're breathing out too little co2 that means you have a lot of co2 in your blood right so we have an increased amount of CO2. We have an increased amount of CO2. It's going to shift the reaction to to use up that CO2 and create more H pluses. So we're going to have an increase in H plus concentration, and that's going to be a decreased pH, right? Or acidosis. Okay. Now, obviously, both of these things are problems, right? We want to fix these problems. So how to solve them? How do we do that? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. So. How to fix. Okay, so how are we going to fix hyperventilation? <clears throat> if we're hyperventilating, we're, we are breathing out too much CO2, right? So we have a decreased amount of CO2 in our blood. So what do we want to do? In order to fix this problem, we want to increase the amount of, of CO2, right? So what you'll often know is that some, you may have already noticed this that sometimes if someone is hyperventilating, you, you, People give them a a paper bag to breathe in, in out of, or excuse me, to to breathe out into and then breathe back in through. So, um, you breathe into and out of a paper bag. Why is that? Breathe into and out of a paper bag. Why? Well, because any CO2 that you breathe out, you'll be breathing right back in. So anything, if you're breathing out too much, you're letting too much of it out, anything that you let out will come right back inside of you, right? So you get that CO2 back in you, you increase this, and when you increase the, the carbon dioxide concentration, um, you end up increasing the H plus concentration, thus decreasing the pH back to normal. Because you can breathe in or breathe back in all or most I don't want to say all all or most of the carbon dioxide you exhaled right 
Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what about hypoventilation? For hypoventilation, you're breathing out too little CO2, right? So you have too much CO2 in you. Well, how do you fix this? Well, you want to get rid of that CO2, right? So you would just breathe out or breathe faster. Or breathe out more or faster, right? So that you can let out, right, more CO2. Okay, so um, I'm not a medical pro professional. I am not a medical professional. So uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt. But um, generally speaking, these two these two sort of how to fixes um, are sensible given this is given this basis for the um, for everything we're talking about. Given this reaction as a basis for everything we're talking about. So hopefully that was helpful, and I'll see you guys in the next video.